Hi, my name is Leslie and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some cool girl shoe trends that I've been seeing on fashion publications, Pinterest, in real life, or just from the people I follow on Instagram. And I'm going to be putting them all in one video to give you some inspo of what shoes are currently trendy. I talk about trends a lot, but I usually just brush over the shoes and just mention them towards the end. So today, we're making a whole video on them. I decided to write down everything instead of typing it all out like I usually do. So I feel like I'm presenting a paper for school. But without further ado, let's talk about some current cool girl shoe trends. Let's start with sneakers. And the general trend with sneakers have been flat sneakers. And I know that the Adidas Sambas fall under this category. And I know that I said I wasn't going to be talking about them, but they come in so many different variations. So if you do want the Sambas, there are so many other really similar pieces from Adidas. Like the Adidas Gazelles, the Superstars, the Samoas, so many. I'll just flash them on screen right now. Generally, I feel like the trendy shoes have gone from the super chunky dad sneakers to really flat dad sneakers. Sneakers. So if you're going for this flat sneaker look but don't want to go for the Adidas Sambas, you could go for the Onitsuka Tiger Mexico 66. These are also equally as trendy as the Sambas, but I thought I'd mention them because they're still a little bit more different. And I feel like I prefer these because I feel like these would stand the test of time more. Recently, I've been seeing a lot of the yellow ones, the blue and red ones, and the metallic ones. But if you're looking for something a little more under the radar, a little more uncommon, I have a few recommendations for you as well. From New Balance, I've been really liking the New Balance RC30s. They're not exactly the same silhouette and the same vibe as the Sambas or the Onitsuka Tigers, but they also have a gum sole, which I think makes it slightly similar. Their silhouette is generally more low profile and more flat and slim, and I feel like they're a little bit more unique. I haven't seen these in stores in Manila yet, but I really like them, and I would really consider picking them up in like a more fun color. If you're more of a Nike girl than an Adidas girl, they also have a lot of similar shoes. The ones that I saw that I kind of liked are the Nike SB Pogos. Again, they're not exactly the same silhouette but they do come with a gum sole and they have the black check just like the adidas sambas have the black stripes and if you're looking for something from fashion houses or brands that aren't as commonly known then you could go for the loewe ballet runners i love these so much they're a little bit pricey and they're really similar to the onitsuka tigers they have the similar line thing on the toe box as well i'm not sure if that's what you call it i'm not a shoe designer but the line that goes like this and then like that another more expensive more under the radar option are the mason magella replica sneakers or the gats so they're a little bit thicker than the really flat sambas or the really flat ballet runners i really like these they have the similar toe box as well they come with a gum sole and they're just a really minimal classic design that i think would last really long and last but not the least if you like the design of the replica sneakers but don't want to shell out that much money a lot of different brands actually have this style of sneaker and full circle moment adidas also has their own pair of these gats anyway enough talk about sneakers now let's talk about some other shoe trends the next shoe trend that I want to talk about are wedges. Yes, wedges are back, but not exactly those really chunky 2010s, 2016 era espadrille wedges. I've been seeing wedges come back in a different form, in a more unique silhouette. And that silhouette is that really slim wedge. And I like calling them the skinny wedges. I think the original, or at least the popular designer for these type of shoes is Bottega Veneta. They have a ton of different wedges with that type of heel. I don't really know how to describe it, but the photos should speak for them. Themselves. But I've also seen other fashion houses like Kate Stodd in Paris, Texas have this type of heel. Also, you know something's really a trend when you see fast fashion stores carry that type of thing. And a lot of fast fashion, more general consumer-based brands like Zara, Charles & Keith, and Revolve have been making and selling their own versions of these really skinny, unique-looking wedges. Personally, I think that they're really cool and they look like they're a lot easier to walk in than kitten heels. So I'm definitely keen on hopping on this trend and I like how they're not as bulky as the traditional wedge complete opposite of what i was just talking about but the third thing i'm going to be talking about is micro heels personally i don't see micro heels that often i went through this vogue article of shoe trends and they were talking about it and i was like i can actually see that becoming a thing so micro heels they're like kitten heels but even shorter and instead of having like a chunkier heel they're just literally a stick the only pair of micro heels that i've been seeing relatively often on the internet are the totem thong sandal heels but but a lot of vintage pairs of shoes from the 2000s and the 90s also come with that super tiny heel so i think that it could definitely be a thing and i see its potential the fourth shoe trend i'm going to be talking about is something you've definitely already heard of but i'm going to be expounding on it and talking about the different sub trends within it and that is ballet inspired styles so we all know that ballet core has been a thing recently and with that the chanel ballet flats and the miu miu ballet flats and other ballet flats have been popping up all over and i was kind of 
of conflicted on the whole ballet flat trend because I wasn't quite sure if it was classic or trendy. But I've come to the conclusion that ballet flats come in two different categories, the classics and the moderns. So, so for the ballet flats that fall under the classic category, they're just the more classic ones that borrow a lot of inspiration from fashion trends in the 90s. One example of these would be the Chanel ballet flats, the quintessential ballet shoes. I feel like that silhouette and that brand is the most classic option that comes to mind for me when I think of ballet flats that are really classic. Another one would be the row, since their designs are so understated, I think that they could potentially be a classic. Unlike the ones from Chanel, the ones from the row are a lot more minimal, they're a lot less girly, and a lot more androgynous. So I think that this one is perfect for if you don't feel like dressing like a girly girl. Another brand that does classic ballet flats is Repetto. I personally haven't heard of this brand before the whole ballet flats trend, so I'm not an expert on this. But I'm pretty sure that Repetto's a legacy ballet flat ballerina brand, so theirs are definitely classic. So if you're looking to hop on this whole trend without being too trendy, definitely hop on these three brands or just pieces that are similar to what they make. Now moving on to the trendier, more modern iterations of the ballet flat. Of course, we have the Miu Miu ballerina shoes. These come in a ton of different variations, like the super flat ones, the one with the heel, the one with a little bit of a platform. And these, on the other hand, are the quintessential trendy ballerina shoes. I think what makes it really trendy is the Miu Miu logo on all of it and the really specific style they have. I feel like Miu Miu was kind of at the start of this whole ballet core trend so they're definitely on the trendier side. Another really trendy ballet core brand that carries really trendy ballerina flats is Sandy Liang. I feel like their styles are really reminiscent on current trends and I feel like they're also the type of brand that starts trends and stuff like that so their ballet shoes are definitely on the trendier side. I've also been seeing these sporty ballet shoes that kind of have sporty details on them and those are definitely another one of those really modern, really trendy ballet shoes. Honestly, a lot of fashion houses carry their own version of really trendy ballet shoes like Alaya has their whole net ballet shoes and their rhinestone ballet shoes. Valentino has their their own rock stud ballet shoes and everyone's just been hopping on the ballet shoes but not all of them are classic and not all of them are trendy so i hope that helped you decide on which ballet shoes you want to hop on moving on to the next trend i think this is a trend that kind of brings all of these trends together and that is second hand recently i've been seeing an influx of online stores and instagram stores that have been selling second hand shoes mostly kitten heels and little shoes from the 90s and the 2000s from designer brands but i feel like in the past it wasn't really super acceptable the thrift shoes most people with thrift clothes, shirts, even like secondhand bags were pretty acceptable but shoes weren't really a really acceptable thing up until recently and with the influx of those types of stores I feel like any type of style of kitten heel from the 2000s is trendy right now. With these stores I see a few common threads of the types of shoes they sell. First of all they're all kitten heels and they all look like they would not work on white feet whatsoever but as for the styles the first thing I've been seeing are those buckles on the front that usually aren't functional and are just there for aesthetic purposes. Again literally every fast fashion brand has been making their own version of shoes with the buckle in the front because they're really trendy and they borrow a lot of inspiration from the 2000s. Another detail that I've been seeing a lot are bows, not just with the ballerina shoes but also with heels and little sandals, just bows everywhere. And last but not least, another common thing I've been seeing with these vintage shoes and the remakes of them are flowers, just flowers on everything. I feel like shoes weren't generally something people would thrift in the past because it would be harder to clean them because you can't really wash them and they're on people's feet so it's like hit or miss. But yeah, lots of stores have been carrying them and it's becoming a whole thing. Everything I just mentioned are more of it shoes that are like super trendy right now. But of course, there are more long-standing, long-lasting shoe trends out there like the pointed toe shoes, the slingbacks, the knee-high boots, the less chunky dad shoes. But I'm not really gonna go deep into those because I feel like those are already really trendy and really generally accepted. With that being said, in conclusion, generally shoe trends right now have been more on the down-to-earth side. By that, I mean they've been really flat, the heels have becoming lower, the sneakers have been becoming less chunky, and everything's just a lot flatter, a lot sleeker, and a lot slimmer nowadays. And the second conclusion I can draw from everything is that a lot of these styles just borrow from the 90s and the 2000s, and we're just bringing them back and copying them and making them a thing again. And yeah, that is about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Comment your favorite shoe trend. Follow me on Instagram at Alyssa Leanne, and on TikTok at Alyssa's Bids. I'm more active on there. Bye!